Lord God the Father, I just pray that you just lighten us by your word, Lord God, and through the Lord Jesus Christ. May he be honored, Lord. I just pray you just help Louise and comfort her, Lord, with her allergies. Lord, I just pray for Michael. Lord God, you give him the ability to be here. Lord, hear your word and get back to you, Lord God. He admitted that he's out of the will of God, Lord. Bless this, Lord. And Lord, for Ron and his mother, Lord, I pray they come back, Lord. And may we do something here for you, Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, John chapter 1, verse 29. We talked about baptism. We talked about verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. Behold, the Lamb of God. And we looked at the Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. Notice it doesn't say sins. Takes away the sin of the world. Now, me personally, and I'm not going to get into it, but everybody, we are all guilty of more than one sin. You're talking about a lost man, okay? Well, he's guilty of not earning his parents all the time. He's guilty of lying. He's guilty of stealing. He's not putting... I mean, that's sin. Why would John the Baptist say, well, here's Jesus, and he'd take away the sin of the world? Because what's going to happen on Calvary is Jesus Christ is going to take care of our sins and when God has Jesus partake of that cup upon Calvary's cross Jesus Christ is going to take all the sin of man there is nobody that can say well I've done a sin that Jesus can't forget, forgive me of no. All sin. And so when John says sin here, we'll look up a couple verses. When John says sin, it's all going to be lumped up. James says, if, you know, if, to him that knows to do good and doeth not, to him it is sin. Christ Jesus took all our sins upon the cross and it's lumped in one. And I, I met two people, well, one person, I heard of another person in my life, two people. Whatever I've done, God can't forgive me. You can't say that. You can't say that that one sin in your life, God's unable, because He took the world and took away the sin of the world. Singular. So, that offering for all, let's look at John 3.16. Most famous verse. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, and John said, Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's God's love for the world, and it's the Lamb of God, Jesus, that we saw last week, that removes that sin. And there's nothing that can deal with the sin of man but Jesus Christ. So, 2 Peter 3.9, over towards Revelation, after Hebrews, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 3, 9. That we see, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Singular. As some men count slackness. But is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, that's John 3, 16, but that all should come to repentance. So when somebody says God sends a, a person into hell, that's wrong. All right, yes, God will tell, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's not Jesus' fault. 
When we pass out gospel tracts, when we knock on doors, when we preach on the street, when we open a Bible or deal with somebody, do you know where you're going to go when you die? And we show them the gospel. If that person rejects the gospel we are bringing to them, it is their fault for going to hell. And they will die with their sin on them instead of being cleansed of their sin. That's the difference. What have you done with your sin? All of it. Put all your sin in one bag. What have you done with it? Have you tried to clean it with your own works? That doesn't work. Have you done religion? That doesn't work. Have you ignored it? That don't work. Have you gone to education? That don't work. Doctors? That don't work. Only by the Lamb of God would take away the sin. Take away that sin. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us, wash us, make us clean. And God is not willing that He loved the world. He says, hey, I don't want you to go to hell. I'm putting a roadblock up. It's Jesus Christ. And no man can say, well, I don't know about it when God tells the Christian, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, woe be to the Christian that doesn't do it. Woe be to the Christian that focuses more on voting than witnessing. That's a shame. First, uh, John 2.2. 2. A couple pages over to the right. Now here, John 2, 2, you may look like a contradiction, for he is the propitiation for our sins, plural. And not for ours only, but the sins, plural, of the whole world. All right, so wait a minute. John 1 said the sin of the world. John, the writer of John is the same writer of the gospel. That we're, we're studying. Contradiction. No, it's not. Jesus Christ bore all the sin at once. He didn't die on the cross for adultery. Came back later on that afternoon and died for fornication. Then come back and died for liars. Then came back and died for not treating your family right. Then come back and died for stealing. No, he died for all the sins in one place. Now, when John's talking about the sins of the world, all right, you're dealing with me. And when you're dealing with me, I'm a sinner with sins, plural. With Jesus Christ, who was sinless and, and holy and right, all the sin of the world, every single sin, was put upon him. Now, with the, now dealing with individuals, we sin, plural. Because we have at least two sins in our life. That's what, that's what the case is. It's not a contradiction. Upon Christ, all sin was laid upon him. Upon me, I'm multiple sins. And it's still the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that will take away that sin. Now, Matthew 7, if they receive or reject. Matthew 7, 13. We are told to go into the world and preach the gospel. I got saved on April 25th, 1987. April 26th, 1987, I began witnessing for Jesus the next day. Six days later, seven days later, I was baptized. And we talked about baptism. I didn't wait for baptism to go out and tell people about Jesus. Then the very next day after salvation, I went and told the first person they were going to go to hell. That's our commission. That's why we're here. To go and tell a lost and dying world that without Jesus Christ, there's no hope. In Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and the nose is all single, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go thereat. Alright, there are some people saying everybody's going to heaven. Not according to that verse, which is Jesus' words. 
Jesus said there's a wide way, a broad way. So most broadways, where do you find all the worldly and carnal entertainment? It's on Broadway. And he said that gate is wide open. And he said many will go there to destruction, that's hell. When you go out and tell people about Jesus, and if, you, if you've been active in the soul winner, you already know everybody doesn't get saved. And there are some congregations that will teach you you're a failure. And they come up with, just say this prayer. Just say this, copy this prayer. I even saw one guy one time, I had a guy one time I was dealing with, and the guy told me over and over, I couldn't give, the, the preacher prayed for me. Well, sir, you must confess with your mouth. You must, uh, the, the preacher took care for that for me. If thou shalt believe on the Lord, uh, sir, I told you, the preacher did that for me. That guy's going to wake up in hell shocked like, well, the preacher couldn't do it for him. And then the verse says, verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, heaven, few there be that find it. Not everybody gets saved. You must come to that Lamb of God as, that we're reading about right now. Now back to John 3.36. John 3.36. So, let me tell you right now, if you're going to set forth and say, you know what, I'm going to witness. I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Let me set forth right now, not everybody's going to be happy, not everybody's going to listen to you. John 3.36. This is John the Baptist speaking, again. Not the John of the writer of the Gospel or, or the epistles of John. This is John the Baptist that we're reading about in John 1. He that believeth on the Son... Hath everlasting life. There's that light. There's that straight gate. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's hell. We don't go out and say a prayer. Rachel was with me the other day. I was dealing with a guy. And she... Every time I talk, you, you know, you're going to heaven, and you, have you believed on Jesus? And he kept changing the subject. And we drove from Daytona Beach all the way to Fort Orange. And we did not say a prayer, and I did not bring him to heaven because I don't think he was ready. Now, there would be other people, before you came to his house, all right, just say this prayer. That's a fool. Because you've got to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that all comes back to John chapter 1. And what John the Baptist proclaimed, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world, not the priest, not the works. And we looked at last week, that Lamb of God, and we proved with the Scriptures. Because he says, Jesus coming, behold the Lamb of God. But we also saw with other Scriptures, that Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is the only means to take away your sin. And Jesus Christ took those sins, all the sin at once on Calvary's cross. Now when we sin, there's multiple sins. Verse 29, uh, verse 29 and 30, verse 30. This is he, Jesus, of whom I said, John speaking, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now John is always and has always, he's proclaimed. He, and they say, are you the Messiah? Are you that prophet? We went through all that. Are you Moses? Are you... I ain't him. I'm not the one. I'm just a voice. Now that Jesus has shown up on the scene, and there is Jesus standing amongst the brethren, John's saying, that's the one. There he is. 
no other but him. Uh, he said, yet the Messiah cometh, and yet now here is the Messiah. And the Messiah is over there, Jesus. So now when we go through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they say, well, who are you? Whence we don't know who you are. Are you the who you think? John the Baptist, according to Isaiah chapter 40, has proclaimed that right there is your Messiah. John is the witness. They cannot say, well, we didn't know. As when we go out and tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we tell them how to be saved through Jesus alone, they're not going to be able to tell God, I don't know. I never heard. Never read. Did they give you a gospel track? Yeah, they gave me a gospel track. Well, they did tell you. Well, I didn't read it. That's your fault. You're right. One of the places I put gospel track is when I go into a public bathroom and before I leave the facility, I leave a gospel track and if you're sitting there doing your business and there's a gospel track, there's no excuse for you not to pick that up and read it. What else are you going to do? When you've got a friend, a loved one, a family, whoever, and they're taking an open Bible and trying to show you the way of life, you are without excuse. Somebody's invited you to church and the preacher's preaching the gospel. There you go. There's your witness. The Messiah has shown up and the witness is, there he is. Pointing fingers. There's no excuse for the people of Israel. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Scribes have set their servants or whoever, their understudies, but the understudies will go back and say, listen, you've got to come with me. What do you want? That man, John the Baptist, he pointed to us the Messiah. Let's show you the Messiah. At any time of the three and a half years that Jesus witnessed and Jesus had the ministry, those people were saying, and all the people say, there he is. The one that just raised the dead person. That's the, that's the one that John the Baptist says is the Messiah. The one that it was lame is now walking. That's the one that John the Baptist. And they're without excuse. I believe that Paul was amongst these people. Because Paul was called an apostle. Now the characteristics of the Bible definition is, is apostle is you have to be baptized of John's baptism. If, if Paul was not baptized of John, he could not have been an apostle. Think about that. Paul went outside the Sanhedrin and he went to... He went to John he said, I need to be baptized. Number two of the qualifications, you have to see Jesus in his earthly ministry. Paul was one of the, Paul was one of the Sanhedrin. He was one of the Pharisees. Man, he could have been one of the ones giving Jesus a hard time. And then you have to be, number three, you have to see the resurrected Christ. Paul's on the road to Damascus and he sees Jesus. And from that point on, Paul goes over with the scriptures of the Old Testament trying to prove to the Jewish people that's the Messiah. They had John the Baptist and they had Paul, or which was called Saul, who was the leading man of all the Pharisees, now pointing to the scriptures saying, there he is. They were without excuse. That's our job. Now, we don't point the world to a Messiah. We point the world to a Savior. Though we can't say, there He is, because He's in glory. It's all by faith. And He says, He's before me, verse 30. Luke chapter 1, verse 36.
And if you do a scripture search, you say, oh, no. No, John, John the Baptist, heretic, heretic. Uh, Luke one thirty six. Contradiction in the scriptures. He said he was before me. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth talking to Mary. Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. This is Elizabeth is John the Baptist's mother. She has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. John the Baptist and Jesus were, were related. Elizabeth and his mother and Mary, Jesus' mother, were cousins. So how did John say, he's before me? Contradiction. Because John the Baptist was six months early. John 8, 58. Now keep that in mind. John is six months older, but John said, Jesus is before me. John 8, 58. John is not contradicting. I don't know how far the Jehovah Witnesses will believe, but this may be a heresy of the Jehovah Witnesses. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. You know how many years Abraham's been in the grave? Let me give you a good figure. Many. Abraham's in the grave and probably maybe just bones by now. John the Baptist said, Jesus is before me. Now Jesus says, as far as Abraham, I was before Abraham. Contradiction. Throw the Bible in the garbage. And people have contradicted the Bible with this and say, contradiction. I am teaching a contradiction by people that believe. At this point in John chapter 8, Jesus is above 30 years old. How on earth could he be 30 years old, A.D., when, when Abraham was B.C.? Now what John said and what Jesus just said is a very important statement. John 1, 1. Remember John 1, 1? A long time ago. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. We saw that. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, the Word, Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. That goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. Though Jesus is six months younger than John, and Abraham was a lot before Jesus by age, Jesus is God, and Jesus has always been. That's what John the Baptist is saying. That's what Jesus said about Abraham. Though he was born of Mary's womb, and he's coming upon 30 years old in John, 30, in John chapter 1, Jesus is a lot older than 30 years old. He's without age. He's always been. So John is acknowledged. You see that guy over there? Yeah, what about him? That's the Messiah. Yeah. He's before me. Check the records. Alright, he was born of Mary. He was born of Elizabeth. She gave birth first. He, uh, John, you're a liar. 
Because according to our records, you were born before he was born. How could you be before him? Because I'm talking about God. How can you be before Abraham? Well, let's go back to John chapter 8. Let's see how the Jews reacted. John chapter 8. 858. The statement is the deity which the Jewish people hate, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. John 858, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. Do you recognize that I am of Exodus 3.14? When Moses is talking to God in the bush, they say, God, yeah, they're going to ask me what your name is. I am that I am. What did Jesus just say? I am. What did Jesus say? I was before Abraham. What did Jesus just say? Well, look at the Jews' reaction, chapter 15, on verse 59. And they then took they up stones to cast at him. They knew full well. Tell the, tell the Jehovah Witnesses. They knew full well. Jesus acknowledged before the Jews, I am God. And they were going to crucify him. They were going to stone him to death right there. Because the law states you're not to proclaim your God. Problem. He is God. We're looking at a statement that is, all right, there's the man who's going to take all the sins in one big shot. And not only is he going to take away the sin, he's the Lamb of God, uh, the Passover Lamb. That's what he's pointing to. But he's also, John the Baptist said, that's God right there. There he is. It's God manifested in the flesh. Revelation 22, 13. Revelation 22, 13. And this kind of message is going to flip the, the Jehovah Witnesses in Crazyville. But Jehovah Witnesses are in a cult by what we're teaching today. Jesus is God. Uh, Revelation 22, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's God. Before there was ever to be something, there was God. And there are always going to be me, God. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Jesus there, if you've got a red letter Bible, that's red letter. Jesus says, I've always been. I was, I, you know, he was born, manifested in the flesh, but the deity of Jesus, I was never born and I'm never going to die. That's what John said. That's what Jesus said about Abraham. Chapter 3, verse 14, Revelation. If you believe the Jehovah Witness teaching, you are completely and against the Bible. Gen uh, Revelation 3.14 And unto the church of the Laodiceans, that's our church. Right. These things say the Amen. Jesus. The faithful, the true witness, unlike the Jehovah Witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In the beginning, God. There, and we went through that whole thing. And you say, why do we spend so long on that? So we can come up to what we're studying now and say, in the beginning, we saw Jesus. We're seeing Jesus again. John is proclaiming before Jesus is baptized, there is the Messiah. Not only is he the Messiah, he is God. Not only is he God, he's the Creator. Right there, standing there. And they had no idea who he was. And there are idiots out there, they look forward to the cross of Calvary. They couldn't even recognize the Messiah. So, so... Colossians 1.15 
Galatians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians 1.15. We are talking about God. God as creator. Don't believe in creation and you're saved? No. You must be saved to be to believe a creation because Jesus is the creator. Colossians 1, 15 and 16. Who is the image of the visible God, the firstborn of every creature? Before any and every creature, there was Jesus. For by him, Jesus, were all things created that are in the heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him. Everything before Genesis 1, whether you believe the gap theory or not, but whatever before Genesis 1, everything was Jesus. There he was. And when God made the moon, the sun, the stars, the, the coconut tree, and he made the, the palm trees, and he made the squirrels, he made the rats, he made the, the human beings, that was all the Jesus' glory. Colossians 1, 8. Who declared unto us your love in the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit speaking what we're reading. The third member of the Trinity. So what we're looking at. Back to, Gen, uh, not Gen, back to John chapter 1. So let's see what John's doing. And only a person who has studied the scriptures would know what John's doing. So your typical worldly church today has no idea what we're talking about because they don't study the scriptures. And we'll start back in verse 29 and we'll do, uh, we'll read up to 31, but we'll come back to 31 next week. The next day, John sees Jesus coming. He sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, we looked at that, which take away the sin of the world, this is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me. What do you mean preferred? Everything was made for Jesus. Everything was pleasing to God through Jesus. Though I'm six months older than he is, he was before me. And I knew him not. Though they were cousins, they didn't grow up together. John says, I had no idea who he was. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, not America. He came unto his own, which we already studied, and his own received them not. He came for the Jewish people. He didn't come for Gentiles. Therefore, Am I come baptizing with water? You, you mean he's not baptizing water to be saved? No. I've gathered all Israel at the River Jordan. Why did I grab why is I why do I'm gathering everybody here at the River Jordan? We're repenting and we're getting right. We're setting ourselves because there's a man coming who is God. Alright? God shows up. Jesus shows up. I gathered the nation of Israel here, Lord, for you. Some of them have repented. Some are truly seeking you. That's why John is there. John is there baptizing for one specific reason. There's the Messiah. You know what your baptism is to show? Not salvation. There's my Savior. There's my Jesus. And I'm going to live for Him for the rest of my life. And that's what John's doing. That's what John proclaimed. That Jesus is God. You can ask your you can ask your Jehovah Witnesses what they feel about that. They won't believe it. They're liars. 
Let's pray. Lord God, the Father, just thank you for you, God, coming down. Lord, Lord, many reject you. Lord God, I thank you you brought me to Calvary, Lord, and you put into me to be saved by Jesus Christ alone. Lord. Lord God, you give me the most important message ever. For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake, we pray. And thank you, Lord. Amen.